Hi guys, Cecile Edwards here of the Mommy Matters Podcast. I have to tell you, if you have not heard about Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Did I tell you that you can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership? It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download your Anchor app or go to Anchor FM, anchor FM to get started. You will not be dissatisfied. Welcome to the Mommy Matters podcast, where Mommy Matters is a double entendre that states and declares that mommies matter, where we have conversations surrounding Mommy Matters from conception to pregnancy to postpartum, mother and father wounds, dating, mindfulness and self-care, spirituality, parenting, discipline, legislation, money, and so much more. It is my hope and my prayer that the information that you gather here serves as a blueprint for generational and individual ascension. Enjoy. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Mommy Matters podcast. My name is Cecile Edwards, as you know the CEO and creative director of Mommy Evolve, where we discuss all things intergenerational healing and self-care. For women in general, I know the name is Mommy Evolve, but my definition of mom is that we are all mothers of something. We create, we destroy, we're mothers, right? So (laughs) with that said, today I am so excited because anyone who knows me well knows that I love to discuss things around spirituality, around spirit, around self-improvement, self-love, all of those things are very critical, I think, to just existing and being the best person that you can be on this planet. And so today I have Neelam Nanuani uh, from Shamanic Wisdom, of Shamanic Wisdom. And today we're going to... Shamanic Vision. Shamanic Vision. Okay. Wisdom is all the more better. (laughs) Clearly, I have a hearing problem today (laughs) and a reading one, too, but that's okay. Multitasking mom, okay? I've been up (laughs) since 4 a.m. Anywho, (laughs) anywho, of shamanic vision, and we are going to be talking about empowered mama, mother as leader. And again, this is something that if you've listened to me, you've heard me say all the time, mother is a leader in their household. And that's something that I had to come to understand, right? Mm -hmm. Because I grew up with a certain understanding of um, leadership in the home. The man is the leader, et cetera, et cetera. But when I sat and thought about it and really looked at the situation, when you consider it, actually the woman is the one that (laughs) steers a lot in the household, right? The man may be the provider, but she's the one that steers the energy in the household, that steers the, and that's something, that's a great lesson for us to know and understand because I feel like we would embody ourselves um, differently when we understand that principle. Mm -hmm. Anywho, so (laughs) let me have Neelam introduce herself, what she does, and just give us some, some pointers and some tips. Neelam? Hi, everyone, and thank you, uh, Cecil, for having me on your podcast and for this discussion. Uh, I'm Neelam Nanwani, all the way from India. It's 43 degrees Celsius out here, which is contrast to 42 degrees Fahrenheit in some parts of the U.S. and Idaho, where my husband is from. <laughs> so I don't know the conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Just know it's I, hot. <laughs> Yeah, it's very hot. It's like 110 degree Fahrenheit to be uh, converted into Fahrenheit. Right. Uh, so we are the hot mama here and you're the cold mama there. And 
the perfect balance of the yin and yang. <laughs> hey, there you go. It has to come together somehow. Yes. It's so hard. It has to come together. Yeah. So thank you for having me. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Shamanic Vision and uh, me and my twin flame, Paul, we teach uh, psycho-spiritual workshops in India and across the world. Uh, and I, apart from me teaching shamanic uh, topics together, I have also been uh, teaching uh, my Empowered Woman Workshop to women across India, talking about motherhood, talking about what is feminine essence, uh, how to embody feminine principle, what is masculine principle, and how to come across a balance uh, within ourselves, how to heal our wounded feminine, and uh, also other things like the nature of a woman caring inside her own body, symbolic to the nature outside in terms of her menstruation cycle, and so on and so forth. So really passionate about womanhood, really passionate about uh, sharing different perspectives of nature which coincide with the nature of a woman. And uh, so, yeah. All right. And, you know, I think that these conversations, it's not even that I think, it's very clear that these kinds of conversations are so critical that the things that you teach about the nature of a woman, um, empowered woman, the cycle spiritual, which I'll have you I, define in a second, just in case there are people who don't know what that means. Mm. But the reason why we require this kind of education for some people, it may be like, well, why do I need to learn how to be a woman? I know how to be, a, you know, that kind of question. We really have to look at society. We have to look at history. We have to look at a lot of the, um, the stereotypes and the prejudices and the those kinds of things that we have around what a woman and a man are to really understand why this is critical this is a critical conversation because what happens is is that when we are living with these kinds of mindsets that this has to be this way in order for it to be good then we pass that kind of understanding down to our children. And mm. it's it leaves this hole. I believe that a lot of us have lived with this hole in ourselves where it's like, okay, I'm trying to conform to the society and what the mm. society says. Mm. But what I'm feeling inside of myself is not matching up to that. So mm. <laughs> how do I reconcile these things? Absolutely. Uh, as you rightly said, why do we need to understand what a woman is all about? Because we have known, but we have suppressed it. We have forgotten. So we need to remember. We need to remember it back within our DNA. It's there in us, but we have forgotten about it or rather chosen to suppress it or it has been stuffed down uh, within us to suppress it because of certain uh, ways of life. So the first thing that I begin talking in the workshop, okay, we are here for the empowered woman workshop but what actually is the feminine principle so we are women so we embody primarily the feminine principle but what it entails and the majority of the women will give the stereotype answer a woman is the one who gives who loves who nurtures who cares mm -hmm. but there are so many facets around being a mother around being a woman that we do not know or we are not taught because <laughs> Patriarchy glorifies only one role of a woman who is a soft woman, who is a nurturer. And of course, a woman is all of that. But a woman is much beyond that. And the society chooses to shame, or I should say, the patriarchy chooses to say, shame other aspects which a woman or a mother embodies. And so, we, because of that shaming and judgmental attitude and that labeling, we have unconsciously suppress those aspects within ourselves and a beat the role of a mother or a little girl or a wise woman a, a woman is not complete unless she embodies each and every facet of what womanhood is all about and that is so important for women to understand and realize and let's talk about how that translates into motherhood right so personally you know i have one child however i have taken care of many I have, I'm a teacher by trade. And so, you know, I've had classrooms and <laughs> we learn these uh, principles of, oh, you have to be nice and you have to be calm and you have to, you know, be nurturing. And, but we also have to understand that there's many different facets of nurturing, 
right? right. So right. nurturing is not just, oh, I'm going to kiss your boo-boo. <laughs> I may kiss your boo-boo, but I'm also going to tell you if you jump off of that thing again, you're going to get a bigger boo-boo. <laughs> right. Okay. You know, you're, it's realistic. It's being realistic. It's also not feeling like you have to be the one to take on all domestic roles, for example. Mm -hmm. It's also feeling, understanding that your ability to rest mm -hmm. is your ability to conjure because when you are moving around all the time, always doing this and that and this, and this, this is stuff that I learned from my own personal <laughs> life okay <laughs> just my own personal life my own personal observations me trying to be something for everybody else and denying what I knew inside of me created more issues than anything else Absolutely. and so you don't have to um you know if you I know for me for example I did a podcast on that said no more yelling right and, you know, I had to make the point on the podcast that, you know, sometimes you do need to raise your voice <laughs> because unfortunately children won't listen to you. If you have this little mousy voice, they're like, she's not serious. And I've tested this many times. I'm not saying that it needs to be, you know, the, the way that you are in life all the time, but it's, it's okay to sometimes show that, I guess you could say masculine. <laughs> I don't know, side of yourself. Right, so that's the whole thing. And that's the whole thing. That the moment a woman has a loud voice or raises a voice, it is so immediately labeled as masculine. And this has been my own personal journey for my entire life, be it my corporate world, be it when I was growing up. I used to be this absolute woman who is, who knows what she wants, who wants to have uh, things done and who, who can be the leader and the Me driving too. force in the family, in the family, in, this, in the society, in the relationships we're in. And it was labeled as so much masculine. And of course, there were aspects of the feminine which I learned to embody is to just when learn when to take charge, when to sit back and allow oneself to receive, when to work, and when to you know rest and not feel guilty about it oh. so many women or majority of women because of societal conditioning or because of this thump in cultural thumbprint that we have that a woman is not significant unless she is doing something or a person is not significant unless uh, he or she is doing something is so deeply embedded that it is very difficult for women to sit back and relax and to sit back and rest and in that overdoing and people people are shocked or women are shocked when we tell them that the feminine principle is also about resting is also about regeneration and the regeneration and the recuperation and the rebirthing cannot happen unless we rest that is why the darkness is the feminine principle because it is where we learn to retreat where we learn to go within ourselves and introspect and reflect that all is feminine principle and that cannot happen for any human being unless and until you have that pause and no wonder it is called the pregnant pause because <laughs> a birthing <laughs> cannot happen unless and until we allow that void allow that empty space allow that rest even when a woman is birthing physical baby it happens mostly in the reclining or the resting position she cannot be active and say, oh, well, I'm birthing a baby. No, it doesn't work like that. So even, even nature teaches us uh, that rest and these different cycles, when to work, when to rest, is so important. The nature is not the same all the time. There is spring and then there is a peak of activity in the nature during summer. And then there is declining of activity when the nature starts shedding, which is the autumn. And then there is the dark periods of winter wherein even the nature rests and then we begin a new cycle of birthing again, which is the spring. And so all of nature teaches us that. And this principle of balance between the masculine and the feminine, when to act, when to be doing and when to be receiving, when to be uh, in the doer mode and when to be in the receiving mode is taught by nature. And the women embody this in their own body through their menstruation cycle because there are phases wherein the women is 
having a lot of energy that is during the pre-ovulation and the ovulation phase and then the woman starts declining in her energy when she hits the PMS phase and when she is in the moon phase when the there is blood and the bleeding that is wherein the body is telling slow down rest so the balance between this a woman knows it intrinsically through her own body and 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 for a mother and we discuss in this workshop that what happens when a woman doesn't embody that so the, the ovulation phase which is of the mother which when she is the mother of the family and not there for herself and if that energy is filled within other phases of her cycle what happens the mother can be burnt out the mother doesn't know how to be vivacious and energetic again and so there is all those symptoms of the ovaries and the pms symptoms and the aches and the pains and and the irritation and the anger because a woman is not taught to honor the energy of each cycle and so there is this huge upsurge of energy which is asking to be channelized in a particular way and the woman is channelizing it in a particular way which creates this imbalance and so we learn to tune into that energy within our body and when we learn to slow down all those problems which the mothers face about being burnt out or even any women faces around being burnt out or being overworked is automatically taken care of as we learn to honor and embody the energy which represents each cycle each phase of the cycle within our menstruation cycle and and our bodies beautifully teach us that particularly women's bodies mm -hmm. uh, these this deep wisdom which is deeply embedded within our bodies we have so much forgotten and it is so important to remember this mm -hmm. that a mother in order to mother others also needs to learn to rest and rejuvenate her own energies before she can go out and give and and the nature teaches us that look at the tree the tree first receives from the earth before the tree can give to the humanity so a primary responsibility of the mother is also to learn to mother her own self yes she is mothering the community and she is mothering her children and sometimes even mothering the husband and and the rest aspects of her life <laughs> <laughs> but but she has to learn and that mothering is incomplete if she doesn't learn to mother her own self and Correct. that is the key aspect to a blossoming mother absolutely i and to and to an empowered mother i should say i agree it's it's you have to in, empower yourself as well first you have to empower yourself first and so this journey into i have a course called evolve the inner mother because many of us are so disconnected from our um, inner cycles and understanding yeah. how that plays out into and so some people might ask oh well how do i get you know, in tune with my inner cycle, because sometimes a lot of things can be going on. As you said, the PMS pains, you know, a lot of us are running on adrenaline as opposed yeah. to just running on our natural cycles. And sometimes you do need some kind of help from nature, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, um, to assist you. So for me, I always, uh, when I teach, I teach women to, there are herbal supplements that you can use to help you to get better sleep at night you know so for me my chosen method is lemon balm because it's you know it works for my bio individuality <laughs> you know you have to find what works for you but those kinds of herbs help you to relax and to be able to sleep well and to you know put pull down your resistance <laughs> and and just let your body just be so that you can actually feel what is going on with you because oftentimes we can't even feel what is going on with us. So it might need to start there for some people. And I mean, pharmaceutical companies have something for you for that as well. <laughs> you can decide what you take. So, you know, we really have to, and whatever it is that we discover, we have to be able to use that information to implement in our lives. And once we can become more in tune with ourselves, we start to see our children differently. We start mm -hmm. to see our spouses differently, our mother, our relationship with our mother and understanding her and what she may have experienced and gone through in order to even get us to the place that we were in for the good and for the bad. <laughs> um, you know, but your, your perspective starts to shift and you start to see how people are ever growing and ever changing. 
and how you can become an empowered mama to be a leader and a force as opposed to be someone who is running in the rat race with them and knocking, <laughs> you know, knocking in disagreement and, and those kinds of things. And it's a constant learning process, trust me, because as I always say, old habits die, die really hard <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and so they may come back up again, but just see it as an opportunity to reevaluate where you're going with it. Choose a, another way to engage with whatever it is that you're dealing with. So, and, and, and I would like to add here that we've become a consciousness who's always in the mind. Uh, even the patriarchy teaches us shaming around our body. So we have moved away, knowingly or unknowingly, from our body consciousness. Correct. But in order to have this awareness of when to act and when to rest and allow that, we need to come back to our bodies. Mm -hmm. We need to get in touch with our body consciousness so that because body talks to us all the time and body is giving us messages all the time and body speaks through us through aches and pains. It is only our body's way of saying, hey, you are not paying attention to me, listen. So whenever uh, I am in my PMS and if I don't consciously become aware and slow down, my body immediately gives me a sign. Either I'll catch a backache or I'll start having irritability bouts. So the same activity and the level of energy and the kind of work that I do will not irritate me when I'm in the other phases of the circle and it will not tire me. But when I'm in the menstruation cycle, in that phase and I'm not slowing down, I will start feeling irritable and anger and aches and pains and my body will start hurting or my back will start hurting. So it's an immediately a symptomatic sign which my body is giving in terms of a message. And that time I can even lie down for five minutes. Agree that if my child is on my, uh, is, is bedridden or is having a fever, I cannot say I'm in my menstruation cycle and I'm supposed to rest so you get lost. It doesn't work like that and I understand that. However, can I say no to socializing during that phase? Can I say no to TV during that phase and say, okay, this half an hour or this 10 minutes or these five minutes I can take for myself wherein I'll give permission myself, give myself permission to lie down, listen to the music that I like or just breathe, you know, and just decompress. And can I give myself the permission to start with even five minutes of self-care or slowing down? And if I begin there, I will get there. And, and once I start prioritizing that, the internal creates a shift in the external. Correct. And so all those extra burden responsibilities which tire me, which have been keeping on coming in my universe, will orchestrate themselves in a way I'm able to align with my cycle beautifully. But I have to take the first step in telling the universe I'm ready. And that first step step can begin with your five minutes of slowing down during that phase or breathing and allowing yourself to take okay I need a breather and it is okay to say no it is okay to be late at times for your lunch or for any assignment that you have you don't have to be so hard on yourself mm. we don't need perfection nature is not perfect and it is okay to be vulnerable and it is okay to be imperfect and when you Give yourself and your body these messages and you allow yourself to just breathe. It begins with just a single breath and, and allow yourself to slow down. These are the baby steps which you incorporate into your day-to-day -day routine. And you're giving a signal to the universe. Hey, and you give a signal to the body. Hey, I'm listening. And the outward will project the inner. And so start, when we start making these even baby steps, it doesn't have to be a big step. Okay, I am working woman. I cannot take the whole day to myself saying I'm in my bleeding phase and I need to rest. No, but at least I can in during those times. Maybe come back home on time. Maybe say no to my boss. Maybe say no to my husband or to my children. See, I need a little five minutes or ten minutes for myself. And when we start making these, and it is okay to ask. Many women do not ask. So it is okay to ask even for a glass of water. It is okay to ask for help. And, and it, we do not become less or inadequate by asking. So when we incorporate these small changes towards empowering our own selves and doing justice to our own energy, the entire universe becomes available to us and orchestrates itself 
in which we can organize ourselves in a better way and which when we are empowered we can empower our society our our the lives that we touch and share with and and so it is very important for a mother to to be able to do these things so that she feels empowered within her own self mm mm-hmm. Extremely, extremely important. And I want to add that for me, the, a critical piece is community. And as you said, you know, if your child is ill and you're not feeling like it, I hope that you have some people in your community that you can call on to say, you know what, can you come help me with this? Because I'm really not feeling it today. Because the, the, the simple fact of the matter is, and again, something I've tested as true <laughs> in my working with my own child and with other people, when your energy is not right, children particularly can sense it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they're little, they're little, little suckers. <laughs> they, they feel it. Okay. They're very intuitive to your energy. And sometimes that will cause them to act up. Sometimes it'll cause them to be a little more loving to you. It just depends. But either way, um, it's okay to ask people to assist you. And it's okay. Also, you know, I agree with the small steps because sometimes it takes something for us to loosen up our mind, but it's okay to be radical too. You can schedule. And, and it is okay if somebody off. says no. So don't take those no's personally and let that no not deter you from asking again and exactly. again and ask differently, ask again and, and, and don't take no's personally. And if you feel rejected or if anybody, if even me feels rejected, then there is another, then realize that there is another deeper aspect of work waiting for us to be addressed. Then we must talk to our little girl within who is feeling so neglected or victimized or mm-hmm. rejected or victimized by listening to that. No. So let's all understand. We can, we can even talk to our inner child and say, Hey, it's okay. To, mm-hmm. to don't take no personally. Maybe the person doesn't feel equipped to help. Maybe the person is not available. And, and it's okay, the same person may be available again to help when we ask again. So let the, those no's also do not deter you from asking again, asking differently. And that's and part of leadership. Are, that's absolutely. part of leadership. Like, no, of leadership. I don't know if there's any leader in this world that doesn't have to ask over and over again, because that's you showing your seriousness about whatever it is you're asking about too, right? And so, the leader doesn't do all the work himself or herself the leader always delegates never <laughs> never and never, the queen, never and the queen always delegates so the mother is always. a queen and the mother is a leader <laughs> hallelujah you're speaking my language okay <laughs> these are these are some things that we really have to unravel unpack see it for what it is and put ourselves in the place of being the leader in our family and really understanding what that means, really understanding what that means, really understanding what that looks like, you know, being determined um, to create the family. And I'm always talking about shifting legacy. And so Mm -hmm. if we're talking about, you know, changing the way that we have done things, the way our mothers did things, Mm -hmm. then we're going to have to come with a different stance within ourselves and in the way that we do things, because we've seen our mothers overwork. We've seen our mothers be tired and feel um, not feminine within herself because she had to do all of these things. Uh, We've seen our mothers, you know, (laughs) do all of the work themselves and get no appreciation. And so now what do we have to do to shift that? You know, instead of, instead of looking and say, oh, you know, my mom didn't do this. Okay. Why didn't she do this? And how can I shift my behavior and my mentality? This is the psycho spiritual part, because once you shift your mindset in the way that you see things panoramically <laughs> around the issue, then you can make different decisions that will build a different legacy, right? And so we have to start with the idea of feeling like we have to do everything in order to be an effective leader, whereas, as Neelam said, truly, we have to delegate in order to be so for example it's okay that your children I remember I had a client that I was working with and she was so afraid to have the expectation that her children perform duties in the household 
Mm-hmm. And um, thankfully, she's gotten over that because she has five children. And I'm like, um, sweetie pie, if you're picking up after five children, number one, you're burning yourself out. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Number two, they're not learning very important skills that they need to know mm-hmm. in order to live their lives productively. Because yes, children need to learn how to take care of a household and them. So that's basic life skills. There's no guilt around that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And they can work together. They can learn how to work together. You know, this is a, this is a, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's something within us that sometimes we feel like we have to do everything ourselves. Um, and, and so they have, they will grow up, the children will grow up and they will go and become a leader of their community or their families. Correct. Uh, and, and so these habits will be passed on or, or rather are passed on from generation to generation. Uh, and a woman or mother is the first person with whom a child has contact with. So the, the emotions of the mother, the belief systems of the mother, and, and whatever a mother comprises, sees, feels, emotes, behaves, are directly or indirectly part of the genetic imprint of mm-hmm. the child. Mm-hmm. So in shamanic teachings or in Native American cultures, we used to say, or we, we believe that uh, whatever actions we take, we think of the repercussions of those actions and deeds seven generations forward. Mm-hmm. And so, and because whatever we do has a ripple effect in the web of life. So whatever I choose to do or choose to not do, choose to heal or choose to not heal, has a ripple effect in the lives of those that I touch. And, and since a mother is so deeply connected with her family, with her children, what she chooses to emote or behave or do has a ripple effect in her own microcosm, in her own family. And those children, when they go out into the society, will affect the society in the way in which they have learned it from their mothers. So, Mother is not only about her own legacy, but it is her, absolutely, and and the whole society, the macrocosm, the whole world as a family has a ripple effect because of the mother. And it is so important for a mother to realize this, that the responsibility and the leadership that she shares and offers and carries, and it is, and I'm saying this not because the mother has to feel a burden because of these responsibilities. But because that if she operates from a healed space and an empowered space, she creates empowered children and those empowered children will create empowered children who will in turn create an empowered society. So it is very important role that a mother plays as a leader, as a caregiver, as a nurturer, as a warrior, as, as, a, as a person who says, look, I will not tolerate any shit. That is also a mother because she is teaching her children about boundaries. And, and I cannot even begin to say how important that role is. She teaches the mother and if she is not taking care of herself and not prioritizing her own self-care, she is teaching her children that herself, that self is not important. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that care of self is so deeply linked to us as adults, as a part of self-worth and self-nurturing. And, and that is... And there's a balance. Us. There's a balance and, as well. Because some, some of us learn, see that, because I've gone through this. We see that our mother is not taking care of herself well and overworking. And so we may go to the other side where we overspend to yeah, look yeah. like we're taking care of ourselves. This is why it's so critical to really unravel. Yes, our, our, uh, what we do and think and feel and all of that has ripple effect seven generations forward. But we also have to be very clear that what has happened seven generations back can still yes, be within yes. us. I just finished reading Dr. Joy DeGruy's book, The Post-Traumatic um, Slavery Syndrome, um, which mm-hmm. is a, a, a very well-known book in the U.S. anyway, and among um, counseling, psychology, and such, um, mm-hmm. because of the, the position that it gave 
the uh, effects that because you have to, when you're unraveling, you're unraveling in your family, but you're also unraveling society, <laughs> you know, and what what has been taken in from that. And so this sounds like it's heavy work, but really it takes self observation and the commitment to being self observing because and when you learn these things about yourself getting some kind of assistance <laughs> right therapy is not a a, a bad word <laughs> um <laughs> you know utilizing the services of depending on where you fall in the spectrum of understanding utilizing the services of um shamans or energy healers that can help to you know remove this energetic imprint because sometimes some things are very heavy honestly mm -hmm. and you do need to see some do something um energetic let me say that <laughs> okay and that's okay too because there are cycles that need to be broken in order for us to really absolutely and and you said the power. very right word observation it is how i learned i carried so much ancestral trauma within my own self uh, i i saw the women in my lineage it could be maternal or paternal uh, it could be their relationships and their lives were so overburdened the lack of support was absolutely missing and that 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 pattern and trauma came into my own life wherein support was missing in my life it from any uh, anywhere that i sought support and it took work it took conscious observation it took conscious energetic work as well to break those patterns of not receiving support of those trauma which the women went through in the lineage and hence i am able to share that with the communities i mother or with the communities that i am part of or the children that i am part of and and i am able to share that and make a difference in their life because i chose to make a difference in my life consciously through conscious observation and as uh, you mentioned through asking for help from other healers or other therapists and working on those patterns consciously so yes conscious awareness observation is definitely the key step which will help you realize okay i do things in a certain way there are certain challenges in my life but are those really my challenges or have i taken those challenges from my lineage because it has always been so Uh, for women or men in the past in my previous generations so yes it begins definitely begins with observation so and you may not like a lot of what you observe because there's been yeah. a lot of stuff that i've had to observe that i was like ooh yeah. Yeah. oh i had to do a, a a snot cry over it but that's okay <laughs> because that was the beginning of the unraveling of something mm. so much greater within me yeah. right it's not going to always be pretty and i think that this is what stalls a lot of people from moving forward because yeah, it can, absolutely it can be heavy energetic work that's why i mean on your team you should always have an energy worker i don't care i don't care what people say yeah, have someone no. who can work with energy in some some way shape or form some people are very good with you know verbal some people can you know do the the mental whatever it is get someone who can help you move that energy and um, and get in touch with your body because get in touch with your wounds mm -hmm. have this practice of putting the wounds in in women's bodies are the best treasure or the best mm -hmm. oracle i would say that they have it within themselves so mm -hmm. have a practice of putting both your hands on your womb and asking closing your eyes mm -hmm. taking deep breaths it is very simple and connecting within what does my body need right now if this pattern is unfolding in my life if this trauma is coming up if this challenge is presenting itself what does my womb have to tell me what do i need how can i change and shift this ask your bodies ask your heart ask your soul and ask your womb she will tell you she is the best guide Absolutely. and and oh, and the gosh. best therapist and the best oracle that you can have within your own body and that is why a life of a woman is blessed because she has within her body all that we seek outside it is inside so a 5 minute practice reconnecting to that essence reconnecting to that treasure is the simple step forward before we can go out and seek other help from other healers this is the practice where we can ourselves begin connecting reconnecting and remembering our core essence mm -hmm. and forgive yourself Yeah. You give yourself yeah. for all of those things that you did that you did not know that you were just yeah. on autopilot. 
Yeah. Once you get to that point of forgiving yourself, your true, true leadership truly does emerge because now you have to be accountable to yourself. That's a, a key point of leadership, accountability to yourself. It's okay to make mistakes. It's not okay to continuously make that mistake over and over and over again and think that it's okay. And, and don't is, be too hard on yourself, as you rightly said. Right. Let go of the guilt. We do not need to indulge in a guilt tripper. We do not need to be a taskmaster who is to be on the go all the time. We do not need to be an inner perfectionist. So I told you I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm going to sleep after this. I had these other things planned. I said, oh, no, Cecile, you will be taking a nap. Okay. So, so become aware. Yes, I encourage you to do that. So become aware of your inner critic, your inner chatter. That is another step of observation, which you talk about. It that is. We can begin observing our patterns, but we can also start observing the chatter within. There's a lot of negative chatter goes on all the time. Oh my goodness. It's an autopilot. That inner critic within us is yap, 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 yap all the time. Oh my goodness. For once you can say, hello, shut up. Right. (laughs) It's not true. This is, you know, sometimes it could be pointing you to something that you need to pay attention to though. Yeah. But, but that's, that voice is not the voice of the inner critic. That voice is of our inner guidance. It's of our inner right. higher self. So and we, we the inner critic can always criticize. Exactly. Right. We learn so to this. discern and understand that sometimes, you know, those voices get <laughs> muddled and crossed. And I think that in this age, we are what I call um, pattern breakers. So women like yourself and like myself who are breaking patterns in society and in we need the extra support and the loving support of one another and to really get our minds right because we're not just discreating we're creating something new and so we have to become very clear about what we are creating okay Mm -hmm. and so in this conversation so one thing that popped in my mind because i know that there's going even though this is called mommy matters and we're talking about women's leadership (laughs) the question almost always surfaces well what about the men so (laughs) i i want to address it usually i don't (laughs) (laughs) i i I always believe that the entire universe is the yin and the yang it's not just the yin it's not just the feminine it's also the masculine and and when both these principles come together a beautiful symphony and and it comes together in a balanced way not in a wounded way there is symphony there is music there is a functional family and there is again a healthy web of life so uh, men need to do their own inner work of owning and embodying the feminine because it's not a taboo. It's, an, it's, it's important to understand that the masculine and the feminine exist in both men and women. So while men need to look at their feminine side, women who also embodying unconsciously the masculine need to look back and say, where am I over masculine and bring in the feminine essence and balance it and the men need to bring in the softer feminine side to balance their over machoism or understand what role nurturing plays and bring in that feminine intuitive side. And when in this dance, the men embody the feminine and the masculine in a balanced way and women embody the feminine and the masculine in a balanced way and then they both meet, a beautiful society is created. And, and this, again, is evident in nature because there are some aspects of nature which are masculine. There are some aspects of nature which are feminine. For example, sun is the masculine principle. Mm. The moon is the feminine principle. But do we just need the moon? Or do we just need the sun? Do we just need the day? Do we just need the night? We need both the light and the dark, the masculine and the feminine. And when both take responsibility in healing their woundedness, which has gone on since generations. We will create a society like we've known, not known before. It will be so healthy and so vibrant and so functional that we will not have these I am superior, I am inferior complexes going on because 
both roles are equally important the man is equally important and the woman is equally important so we need the provider and the tough warrior and we need the nurturer who can also be a warrior at times and and the warrior can also be the nurturer at times and both interweave beautifully the, the, these principles and create a healthy family which in turn creates a healthy society exactly so the the the, the answer here is that as women are doing their work and claiming their leadership men this is a consideration you may have to do your work and consider how you are taking a back seat a little bit <laughs> so that the women can sort of balance out some things that need to be balanced out with their with the feminine principle and you know you're finding balance within yourself through that feminine principle as well um because you know we've heard this idea that the age of you know the divine feminine is rising and we see some vestiges of that in you know just the focus on women's leadership uh, business ownership the way that a lot of businesses in general in the world are shifting to be more um uh was service centered um and those kinds of things um is really shifting and changing and this is no different it, it starts with the smallest piece of society, ourselves and our families. And so, you know, as women, we have to um, consider what we're creating in our families and within ourselves. Um, and being honest, as you said, being honest and vulnerable about the things that we are uh, experiencing and learning is, I think, probably the most powerful thing we can do because a lot of what gets created that doesn't serve us gets created in you know under shadows or under um assumptions or <laughs> under you know it's it's great to be open and vulnerable about what you're feeling even if it doesn't come out well you know it's important to come out and so with that said, um, I, want to, I want you to talk a little bit more about, before we exit, I want you to talk a little bit more about the Embodied Shakti uh, Summit that is coming, mm -hmm. which is amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I cannot wait. Um, it starts soon. <laughs> Very it soon. starts actually 5th April, and it will go on till the 19th April. And there are almost 35 plus speakers who share their wisdom. Uh, if you have not signed up, please sign up on www.embodiedshaktisummit.com. Uh, once you sign up, you will receive emails every day about the links to different talks. And each speaker offers their own unique ascents. And not only that, there is a free gift which each speaker has been generous enough to offer uh, to their audience. So do, uh, I encourage all of you to sign up uh, as it will expand your views on feminine leadership and feminine assess the mother principle and all the aspects that we've briefly spoken about right now. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And how, what is the website they can find that at to sign up? It's www.embodiedshaktisummit and I'll, of course, share that link um, in the description of this podcast. And so how can people connect with you, Neelam? I know that you'll connect. be in the U.S. soon. So, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so we are doing our retreat to Sedona from May 12th to May 19th and excited about our upcoming travel to the U.S. Uh, people can look me up on uh, www.shamanic-vision.net. Uh, where me and my husband and twin flame Paul share a lot of things. So there are a lot of newsletters and uh, they can sign up uh, to be in touch and get to know more about our work. So yeah, www.shamanic-vision.net. 
Excellent. And you know what, as you were talking, I forgot to say, to ask you about the definition of psycho-spiritual, because I, <laughs> I, I try to be uh, cognizant that not everybody understands certain terminology too, right? So right. <laughs> before we exit, I want you to define that, what that means exactly, and how that fits into our daily existence. And also um, twin flame, because you also have used that terminology. Right. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so psycho spiritual. So we are mind, body, and spirit. So the spirit aspect of it is the spiritual. So we teach shamanism, uh, which is a way of life, and 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 you can look it up on the website as to what it entails. And we have a one-hour uh, webinar, pre-recorded webinar on what it is and what it is not. Uh, so it is all about connecting to the nature and elements, our guides and seeking wisdom and guidance and it's all about connecting to nature and and all of the things that we talked about working with our ancestors and working with our wounds and all of that so that is the spiritual aspect of it in terms of the energy healing that we talked about and how to heal certain aspects of our life if we have an issue so for example we teach ancestral healing so if there are people who have certain patterns coming from ancestral lineage physical psychological or uh, other aspects of mental, what we can do spiritually about it, what we can, what processes we can apply to heal those aspects so we have a better empowered life, so spiritual being in that aspect. The psycho-spiritual aspect relating, coming from, the psycho aspect coming from our psyche, we, wherein we talk about uh, we need to heal emotionally in order to grow spiritually. So those aspects that we talked about in our talk about our anger, about our wounding, about our patterns which we have unconsciously picked up and sharing, uh, passing those things forward and how to do to correct those. So we do inner child work, we do shadow work and we talk about death and rebirth in our workshops. So so all of those aspects which talk about working with our emotional aspects of our healing, which which talk about healing our psyche. Uh, So that coming from the psyche aspect of that. Mm -hmm. And then spiritual coming from the esoteric aspects about working with our dreams as a guide, as our guide, so how to tap into our dreams, how to work with our ancestors, how to work with our soul, how to heal our soul coming from the spiritual aspect because shamanic work is all centered around soul healing. So what do our souls need? Why have we have birth? What is the soul purpose? We talk about mind health. We talk about body health, but we don't talk about soul health. So spiritual coming from that aspect of shamanic work about the health of our soul. So when we, when soul experiences trauma, Mm. we know what happens to the body when there is trauma. Mm -hmm. We we know what happens to the mind where there is trauma, but we are not taught what happens to the soul when there is trauma. Yes. And that, Mm -hmm. and that we are here in our physical bodies as a soul living a physical existence. So what our soul desires, what it needs, we never pay attention or we are not taught to pay attention to that. So the spiritual aspects come from tuning into our souls, apart from tuning into our bodies and emotions mm-hmm. and understanding why we have chosen this journey as a soul. We talk about we pick the patterns from our mother or father, but our soul has also chosen that mother and father. And your children have chosen you as a mother and father. So why as a soul we make certain decisions? And to understand that, and when we have that wisdom, the victimhood goes away. Because I was angry all my life. Why my father did not support me? Why he was so passive? Mm -hmm. And why my mother was like this? And why I had rejection all my life in my relationships, in my journey as my corporate worker and in in my journey as a spiritual uh, healer? Mm -hmm. Why I had so much judgment and rejection? So when I get these answers at the spiritual level and when I connect with my guides and when I connect with my soul and get the wisdom on that, the healing embodied in the physical reality becomes easier. It comes from a space of empowerment rather than a space of victimhood. And so in terms of psycho-spiritual, it encompasses understanding my journey as a soul. When I understand the journey of my soul, I understand my emotional journey. And when I heal my emotional journey and my and when I'm connected, uh, to my soul and when I heal my soul, I am more empowered as a human being. I could be my role as a leader or as a mother. Mm-hmm. So psycho-spiritual comprises all of that. Right. 
You can't separate. You cannot separate them. <laughs> it's not. Mind, body, spirit. It's connected. And even if one aspect is not healed, uh, we are not healed or empowered. So looking at that aspect. And so instead of being a victim or help, I felt very helpless at one point in my time. And I said, Me I too. cannot be so helpless. Correct. What can I do to heal those aspects where, which are disempowering me right now? And that's how my own spiritual journey started. Uh, so what I share is truly from having experienced all of those yes. and my empowerment comes from uh, healing and understanding all of those aspects. So I, I see and feel those aspects in other women and, and, and in other men. And I understand it from have a space of living, having lived those wounds and having healed those wounds and continue to heal those wounds because it's a journey. It's, it's a process. It's not a one-time event. Mm. And that is why... A woman's journey, a mother's journey is a spiral. We go from one layer to another, to another. So, so remember this when you are empowered, when you are overwhelmed, as you said, if we do not have to do it in one day, we do not have to figure it all out in one event, it will go layer by layer by layer. And, and it's okay. And it's really okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the earth formed over millions of years. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. If you believe in the Big Bang theory, then, you know, there was a Big Bang, but then there was a, a putting together of the cosmos in such a way, you know, things take time. And so whatever you start now in this generation, just set the intention that it will continue in the next generation, in the next generation, it will continue to unfold. And, and the benefit will be that to the extent that I heal, my future generations will have lesser trauma or lesser aspects to look at. The dysfunction can end, has a possibility to end with me. So I have 45 years or 50 years of trauma behind me. My children don't need to have that. They can, they can grow as empowered adults and they can be an empowered children while, even before they become empowered adults. And that's the responsibility a mother carries. And, and that's the power a mother has. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. And so with that, um, you can contact me. I will um, add your contact information to the podcast description. And it was such a pleasure. I, I love your work. I love the work that you and your husband are doing because it is so critical to the true evolution and the true freedom that we need to experience in the coming years and the new world that we are you know going to experience and the more that more of us that are exposed to this work and to our inner leadership and our inner guidance and um, becoming empowered in such a way that is not disempowering to someone or something else um, it makes it all the better for us to exist as harmonious harmoniously as possible and better able to meet whatever challenges that, that come along in the world. So I really appreciate you and your work and I look forward to one day meeting you. Yes, yes. <laughs> certainly, certainly. <laughs> one day meeting you. I, I've been saying for the longest that I need to go back to India. Um, and so and I know that I will. It's just a matter of time. And, and who knows, I may come to East Coast one day and, uh, and there are opportunities, so who knows? <laughs> hey, make sure you call me, okay? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and um, so, as I said, contact, connect, um, learn and explore this inner world and teach yourself how to become that empowered mama and that natural leader. So thank you all. Thank you so much for having me and for this beautiful conversation. Thank you so I much. I love it. Thank and you. thank you so much for everybody for who's listening. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much and peace and Have blessings. a good day. <laughs> yeah. Did you like that? I know it was as informative for you as it was for me. Look, this is a process for all of us. And to keep this process going, I would love to invite you to donate to our podcast. We want to continue to give you high level content, beautiful content that enlightens and inspires and broadens your vision to elevate you and evolve. So please feel free to go to the podcast page at anchor.fm 
forward slash mommy matters. We would love to hear your questions and comments as well so that we can discuss them in future podcasts. And you can email that to momevolve at gmail.com. You can also visit the website and send your comments there, www.mommyevolve.com. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Peace and love.